Steve Dotto here. How the heck are you doing this fine day? Me? I'm chomping at the bit, ready to get answering your questions on this week's Ask Dotto Tech because the questions are outstanding. We are going to talk today about two of my favorite topics. We're going to talk about Google Photos and we're going to start things off by talking about Evernote. So sit back, relax, and prepare to learn something new on Ask Dotto Tech. This feature, Ask Auto Tech, is really turning out to be, a, I think, a great, uh, a great addition to our community. Now, if you've got a question that you'd like my help on, I encourage you to post that question in the YouTube comments. I respond to as many as I can and answer here in this format just as many questions as I possibly can. We don't get to everything, but we do get to a lot. And today we're going to be talking primarily about Google Photos, which I'm increasingly liking, and Evernote, which you know that I've got a man crush on. I've just liked it forever. So let's take a look at what Rick Mortimer asked a few days ago. He says, Steve, thanks so much for your instructive videos on Evernote. You are most welcome, Rick. I love this program, but there's so much to it. You know, that's one of the things about Evernote. It's a tool that you can use just a little bit, or it's a tool that you can use a whole lot. I've been using email to send to Evernote lately, and I remember that you had a video which included how to use tags and hashtags to send emails to Evernote so the mail went to a specified notebook with tags. Can you tell me where to find this information? Thanks again. Indeed, I can tell you where to find this information. Now, because you're saying that you're currently doing this, I know one thing about you. I know that you're now using the premium version of Evernote. One of the challenges uh, for Evernote users is that the basic version, the free version, used to include an email address that you could send to in order to ship information into Evernote. That has been taken back and you only get the email address now with your premium account. But I think personally that it probably is worth the price of admission, that the premium accounts, just the ability to be able to send email directly into Evernote makes it worth the additional cost of the premium version. Now, what do I mean sending email to Evernote? From your inbox, you can take any email that you have and you can fire it off, send it as an email and it will appear in Evernote and you can actually designate where it lands in Evernote if you've got notebooks and if you're using tags to add structure. So it's a very powerful idea. You can actually subscribe to newsletters and give your Evernote email address as a newsletter subscription so that newsletters could go directly into Evernote and you could file them if you wanted, if you wanted to do that sort of thing. And you can also have people send information to you in Evernote and completely bypass your inbox should you choose. But personally, I use it primarily for all of my accounting and other information that I want to find over and over again, or like invoices or bills, that sort of stuff. I want, I send all of that stuff, anything that I want to retain from my email account into Evernote. And why don't I just leave it in email? Because email, I, I use Gmail and Google's got a pretty good search engine. Well, to be honest, regardless of how good Gmail is, it sucks trying to find stuff in email in comparison to trying to find it in Evernote. So I think that Evernote is a place that we like to store our, all of our valuable information. Email is a place for us to communicate. So getting valuable information out of our email, well, I think that's just a great idea. But I've gone on long enough. Let me show you how to find it. So I'm going to have to do a fair bit of blurring out of stuff because we're going to see account details. But how you find your Evernote address, if you have a premium account, is you go into your account info and there you go into more account settings that launches the web browser version of your Evernote account. And there near the bottom, you find your email address that you can send and receive email to Evernote, or sorry, that you can send email into Evernote from. Of course, this is blurred out, so I'm not getting a whole bunch of extra information. But if you happen to have accidentally shared this with too many people and you're getting too much junk email in it, you can actually reset this, get a whole new email address from Evernote and use that in the future. So this gives you that kind of control. Again, this is only available to premium users. So how does this actually end up working for us? Well, let's go into Evernote, uh, let's go into, sorry, Gmail, and let's compose a quick test email. So I'm gonna send it to Steve's, Steve's Gmail, uh, Steve's Evernote account. And I'm just going to call this test one and I'm going to send it. Nothing too fancy. So all I did was sent that. Now it's going out through the internet, going to the servers, to the Gmail servers. The Gmail servers are redirecting it now to the email uh, servers at Evernote. And Evernote should be now accepting that new document into my inbox here in Evernote. So let's just go into my notes here in Evernote. I'll minimize this. And if I refresh and sync my Evernote account, there's that email that I just fired in to Evernote. It's that quick and that easy. 
But the question that was asked was how do we send an email to an individual notebook? You see, I've got all of these different notebooks that create diff uh, a large amount of structure for my Evernote account. So let's send this email to our demo notebook for the course. And when we do that, let's also add a tag. I've got all these different tags that add structure to my Evernote account. And I'm just going to add the email tag because it's going to be related to doing email. So I'm going to try and send the, a, a new note from email and I'm going to try and have it land in my demo notebook for course. Okay, that's the notebook I'm going to try and have it land in. And I'm going to try and give it a hashtag or a tag which says email. Now, I've got a little cheat sheet for you here. I know, Steve, why do you need cheat sheets? We need cheat sheets to make sure we get the right nomenclature, we get the right order. And the order that you do this in is you create the name, the email subject name, the title of the note, a reminder date. You can actually put a reminder date on it, the folder followed by the tag, and use the at sign to designate the folder and the pound to designate tag. Does that all make sense? Let's go do and let's give it a try. Let's compose a new note to my Evernote account. There we go. And the subject is landing in the right notebook. Now, at sign. And what was the name of that notebook? I'm going to just check to make sure that I know exactly which notebook it is because I forget the name. It's demo notebook for course. It's a little bit of a long name. Demo notebook for course. And then I'm going to use the pound key and I want to add the tag email because it's related to email. All right? So if I've done everything right, this should work. I'm sure hoping it works and I send it. Now we wait. The message has been sent. The internet magic is happening. The email is going up to the cloud servers. Gmail is distributing it and sending it to Steve's Evernote account. Steve's Evernote account momentarily should be accepting this. And if I refresh now and we go into that demo notebook that I've created just for this sort of purpose, look at this landing in the right notebook. The email was just sent to me and look there, you can see the tag email touchdown Dotto complete domination of sending an email into a, a, a discrete Evernote notebook with a tag. This control gives us tremendous control. <laughs> this level of control gives us tremendous control over our messages that we're going to be sending into Evernote and really adds to our, to our level of productivity using Evernote. I think it's a way, a cool way to use it. And Rick, thanks for asking. I kind of felt like I got to show off a little bit there. I love that feature. I love how we do that. And in case you want to have a, a text version of this kind of a, this process, I'll include a link to, uh, to a, uh, a blog post that describes the exact same process. So there we go. All right. We're not done with Evernote yet. No, no, no. Cause we've got Gordon Stoa who asks, love your info through Dotto tech. I would like info on adding an image from Google Photos to an Evernote note. And he has Google Premium, he has Evernote Premium. It doesn't really matter if you have Evernote Premium or Evernote Basic. It's pretty easy to send a note or to send an image from Google Photos. So here's my Google Photo account. Uh, and with, as you can see, I've got all of these different photos available to me. Now, if I wanted to take one of these photos and send it, you know, let's find it. Let's, oh, here we go. I'm, I'm with, I'm, I was visiting New York recently with the lovely and talented Kim Garst and Sue Zimmerman. So let's take this photo here. Let's say that I wanted to put that photo and save that photo into Evernote for some reason. Well, if we look here in our sharing options within Google Photos, and the sharing is that this little, these, these little connected dots. If we click here, we see I can share this photo using Google+, Facebook, or Twitter, but there's no way to share it and send it directly into Evernote. I can create what's called a shareable link, which if I click on this, it will create a URL that I can send to somebody else so that they can open the note. Let me show you what happens when somebody else opens that note. If I was to paste that note in Evernote, it would appear just as a web link, but if somebody clicked on it, they would gain access to that one single photo. So that's a way to share the photo uh, very economically because you're just basically sending a link that somebody can download. It's like sending a Dropbox shared file link or something like that. But that's not how I, that's not how we will end up getting this photo here into Evernote. Instead, what we can do is we can just do this way back to Computer Processing 101. I'm going to right click my mouse on the photo and I'm going to copy the image. Just going to use the clipboard in my computer 
I'm going to head over into Evernote. And right here, underneath your question, Gordon, I'm going to paste the photo, and it's in Evernote, available for me to use any way that I choose. It couldn't be simpler as far as copying and pasting photos right into Evernote. It, it works on standard copy and paste. But let's not leave that. Let's stay with it for a moment, and let's answer this question here, which is, oh... Man, I, I'm not even going to try your name. I'm sorry. Could you please make a video on how to upload a photo from Google Photos to Facebook? Well, it's almost the exact same process. Let's just jump back in and let's say that I wanted to post this to Facebook. Again, using the share tool right within Google Photos, I can then post it to Facebook. It creates a Facebook connection. It goes through and it creates a post for me and embeds the photo in it from Google Photos. It's that easy. It actually couldn't be simpler. You have those sharing capabilities built in to Google Photos. Before we leave the Evernote story, I have one thing that I want to tell you about. I have been working hard developing the Evernote Quick Start. I've taught so many people how to use Evernote in our courses and free tutorials that I think I've developed what might be the easiest way to get started with Evernote without worrying about the depth and the breadth of the topic that seems to stall people because they're trying to do too much with Evernote right out of the gate, my Evernote Quick Start Guide will walk you through what I consider to be a really logical and simple way to start using Evernote, integrate it in your day-to-day -day life, and ease into using Evernote. It's a series of four really quick videos, three to four five-minute videos that walk you through setting up your Evernote account from the very beginning and what you should be using it for from the start to set you up for success with Evernote in the future. The Evernote Quick Start Guide is free. All you have to do is click in the link here in the video, in the card, or in the description below, and you can gain access to my free Quick Start Guide. So I encourage you to do just that. And I think that pretty much wraps things up for today. My thanks to everybody who asked questions. And remember, if you have a question or a comment, enter it into the comments area here in YouTube. And I guarantee you, I will read it. And if I can't answer, I will. Dotto Tech is brought to you by our friends at Blockless. Blockless marks an end to regional restrictions in, on the internet. It's how I view US Netflix, which significantly increases my quality of Netflix viewing experience. Until next time, I am Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.